Hi everyone, this is Lori here with Lori Hooks. Welcome, thanks for hanging out with me today. So um, it's been almost a month and a half since I've been on here. Um, so I'm out of practice for recording, so we'll see how today goes. Um, but yeah, so first I'd like to say thanks for hanging out with me. Um, if you're new, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. And um, I always appreciate you guys having a little visit with me. So I'm going to start out with um, the crochet and a couple knit things that I've been working on. We'll start with the finished objects. And then uh, if you're interested to know what I've been up to for the last month and a half, we'll talk about that afterwards. So let's start out with finished objects, as I said. So the first one I did show in my last video, and this is the first, the thing that I finished first, so probably have the least recollection on. If you're seeing me look this direction, my tablet is over here that has my notes on it for the projects that I've been working on. So here's the first one. So this is the Easy Granny Stitch uh, Crochet Tank Top, and it is by MJ's Off The Hook Designs. Um, I did not purchase this pattern. I do often purchase her patterns when I make something of hers. This one I did not purchase, but this is my top. So I did make quite a few changes to the pattern and I will talk about that as well. Unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures of me wearing it. I should have, but I didn't. If I had done that before I started recording today, probably wouldn't have gotten around to it today. So. I wanted to get on here and get recording, so I'll show you the top instead. So it's a really cute tank top. It's a really cute pattern. It's got a racer back design. Um, and it is made with the granny stitch. I did use the recommended yarn for this, which is... Um, it's Comfy Fingering by We Crochet, and this color is Marlin. And I did quite a few changes to this pattern. Um, her recommended crochet hooks were a 3.5 and a 4.5. Um, if you heard about, I explained this in my last video, but I will try to do a quick explanation again. I thought that I had gauge for that size hooks. I, did, I didn't do a swatch in the pattern she has you start with the back panel. So, and not, not the, the shoulder portion, you start basically right here. So I made the back portion and thought that I was at gauge. I did probably 12 rows and then I measured it and I thought that I had pretty good gauge and I continued on to work the front portion so that I was just, um, you know, where you joined and I did the first few rounds after joining the body portions so that you're working into the body like some stomach section of the top because it's worked sort of sort of top down you do the back up to your bottom of your armpits and then you do the front up to the bottom of the armpits and join everything together and yeah so that was a terrible explanation but i thought that i had gauge but then once i put the two panels together, I realized that no, my gauge was way off. It was way too big. I decided that I probably loosened up once I started to get into it. And I don't want to... Reading her Facebook page and where she has, like she has a support Facebook page with, um, you know, people supporting each other and showing their projects and stuff like that. And a lot of people who worked on this top also had trouble getting gauge. Um, so I don't know if it's me or if it's the yarn because I don't usually use fingering weight yarn to make crochet items. So very well could be the yarn. But anyways, the point is, is that I couldn't achieve gauge. So what I ended up doing was she uses a chain one between the granny clusters I end up taking the grit to chain one out and that's what fixed it for me going down a hook size then you know my row height was too short and 
I just didn't like the look of the stitches with the smaller hook, so I decided instead to take the chain ones out. And I think that it looks pretty good without them. So it's not as holy as it would have been with the chain ones, but I kind of like it like this. Well, not kind of, I do like it like this. So, but I really like how the top came out. It actually, it's too bad that I didn't take pictures of me wearing it because it actually fits me really nice. Um, it's really soft yarn. It's, um, you know, it's fingering weight, so it's not as fun to work with as like a far weight is, but it's a nice soft yarn and um, it's gonna be a really nice, comfortable shirt to wear when I wear it. So I have to admit, I didn't actually wear it yet because I had it sitting here beside my chair. This is where I crochet at night. And I had it sitting here on the table beside me where I put my stuff when I'm done working on it. And so I haven't worn it because I've been waiting to show it to you guys. So if you have any questions about this top, send me a comment. My email is also included in the description box below. Let me know if you have any questions. But I did enjoy working up this top. I just have trouble getting gauge. So that was my first finished object. My next finished objects are not very exciting objects. I went on vacation for a week and we were camping. I was having trouble finding stuff to bring with me. I always bring dishcloth yarn with me to knit dishcloths in the car because I find it to be a really good car project. So I ended up making dishcloths my week that I was off. Um, We'll get more into that later maybe, but um, that was my project that I spent the week working on. I did bring other things with me, I just didn't end up doing it. But, and you know, dishcloths are my no thinking, relaxing type project. So I made three dishcloths that look exactly like this. Um, and I didn't sew in my ends, there's my end. Um, so for these, I used a 6.5 millimeter knitting needle and this is the a typical granny, what do they call this? I think it's called grandma's dishcloth or something like that. Um, if you, there's all kinds of YouTube videos for what this dishcloth is. There's also written patterns that are free. I can probably find a free one to include in my description box for a pattern. But it is worked corner to corner that you start on one side and you work it down and I went up to 50 stitches wide. So it makes a pretty big dishcloth. Now as a comment, this is Burnett Handicrafter Cotton and I have one here that I have used and washed a few times. So this is the same colorway. You can see how much it has faded in the wash and it is quite a bit smaller. Yeah, it shrunk quite a bit. So that's part of the reason why I really go up on my knitting needle because they shrink and they fade. And so that's the reason why I do it that way. I think I'm kind of a bit of a tight knitter, especially when I'm knitting dishcloths because I tend to knit them when I'm riding in the car or something like that, that I find the tension is kind of off, that it's too tight. It's the situation that I'm in. I'm not a very good car passenger. I prefer to drive, but um, when my husband and I go places together, usually he drives and I don't pull the trailer. So, cause we have a small camping trailer that we take camping with us. So, and I don't drive with the trailer on. So to help me be a better passenger, I knit. But I'm stressed, so I'm probably knitting really tight. So that's my knit dish cloths. I made three of those while I was away that week. So that is finished objects two, three, and four, I guess. Um, so then the next thing I started was um, I was with a friend one day and we were talking about um, beach hats and I had knit a few, not knit, I had crocheted my daughter some bucket hats before she went away for the summer and I was showing my friend pictures of them because she asked about them and then she said well I can't buy myself a, a bucket hat because the buckets hats are always too small she has a big head 
I know not very complimentary thing to say, but she has a big head. And so she has trouble finding bucket hats that fit her. So I offered to make her one, which I still need to give her. So here is her bucket hat that I made her. I will include the YouTube video for the instructions for this hat in the description box below. If you're interested in what colors I used, this is Handicrafter Cotton. Sorry, I'm on my tablet looking up. What did I, where did I put? Oh, it's put away in the app. I can't find it. So um, this is a granny stitch bucket hat. As I said, I will include the tutorial YouTube video in the description box below. Um, but the colors that I used were white and I believe this blue is called camo blue. As you can see, it's kind of got like a variegated look to it. Um, so it's like a multicolor blue. I had it in my stash. She asked for blue and white, so hopefully she likes that okay. And I did do an extra increase in the top before I just continued working in the round. So if you have any questions about how I did the extra increase, let me know. But if you follow the video where she just continues to work in the round, I did an extra increase at that point. So that's the change that I made. And as I said, be glad to explain. If you have questions, I used a five millimeter hook for this. So that is it. Finished object what? Five? Maybe. Um, next things that I've been working on, and these are not finished objects, is the next thing what I did was I wanted to make a gnome. Um, and so I decided to do a Passionate Crafters Daisy Gnome. And here she is so far. These daisies are all pinned on. It's been finished to this point now for probably over a week, well over a week. Yeah, because today's Thursday. It's probably close to two weeks I've been at this point. I couldn't find my glue gun and I'm too lazy to sew these on. So I was just going to glue these on. Um, the glue gun that I use is actually my daughter's glue gun and she was away for the summer. Um, but she came home last Thursday and she found her glue gun for me and I just haven't gotten around to gluing these on. But I will glue these on eventually, probably this weekend. And I'm going to use some felting wool and make her a beard. I guess she'll turn into him then, although she looks kind of girly. But I want her to have him to have a beard, not sometimes I do like curly. I do braids or I do these curly things, but I'm gonna do a beard on this one, I think. But I will do that this weekend after I glue these daisies on. Cause I do find the felting wool beard to be the most, what's the word I wanna use? Fragile, maybe? My gnomes are for display purposes, for looking at, they're not toys, so you know, the felting wool's fine, but it does get messed up pretty easily, so I do it last. But that is the Daisy Gnome. I don't know if I'm gonna bother showing it to you guys again, we'll see. We'll see whether or not you see it again next time in my next video. But she's almost done, or he is almost done. Um, the other thing I've been working on is my daughter had requested a Daisy blanket, and if you've been here before, then you've seen these before. But I have been making these daisy squares. Make sure I show you it the right way around. So I've been making these. They are kind of tight with a tight hook. I'm using a five millimeter hook to make these because my daughter does not like holes in her blankets. So I will include the tutorial and the pattern in the description box below for what I'm using for these. But um, they are kind of a tight daisy square that, you know, if you were making this, you might find some options that you prefer better. Um, but I keep working on these squares. My daughter counted them the other day and I think we're up to a hundred of these squares. And I think that I want something like 120 or 140 of them. So I will continue making these squares. But I figure I probably made 15 or 20 of them this month. 
I just work on them here and there when I, you know, when I feel like it, I'll work on two or three one evening. I sew in the ends on each one as I go, except for the final end, but the rest of the ends are all sewn in. But yeah, she came home from being away for the summer and she kept asking me while she was away whether or not I was continuing to work on her squares. When she came home, she counted them and she figures that it's pretty close to 100. I think she kind of stacked them and then compared the stack sizes rather than counting each one individually, but there's close to 100. So there's daisy squares. What else have I been working on? Oh, and I started one other thing. Um, MJ's off the hook design. She also released some V stitch tops this summer. And so I decided to make the V stitch cardigan. And this is what I have so far. So it has worked top down. I'm going to fold it in half because it's easier to show you guys. It's worked top down. It's V stitch. See, it's so dark. It's hard to see. Um, but I believe this colors, I have the yarn here. This is again, the same yarn as I used for the other um, MJ pattern. This is We Crochet Comfy Fingering Weight and this is the color Blackberry. This is what the skeins look like. So it's a really dark purple. Um, and I'll include the pattern on her blog. It was It's available for purchase or you can use it for free off her blog as I said. I didn't buy the pattern for this one either, I'll admit. Um, but I haven't gotten far enough yet to join for my sleeves, but that's where I'm at so far. I don't know, I'm probably 18 or 20 rows in. But it's a slow work because it's a fingering weight yarn, but it's, as I said, it's a nice yarn to work with and it's fun to work on at nighttime. And I've been enjoying working on this. Um, I think I'll know better once I join for my sleeves, whether or not like measuring my gauge, my gauge looks pretty good, but I'll know once I join for my sleeves, whether or not things are fitting well. And those are the things that I've been working on, which isn't really a lot considering the fact that it's been like a month and a half since I've been on here. And I typically normally crochet almost every day or every day, at least for a little while. Like, it's my chill thing to do. But I had quite a few days this month that I haven't crocheted. And kind of let's get on to a quick version of the personal things that I've been up to lately. Um, so first of all, my husband and my son play baseball in the summer and I like to go watch their games. Um, I score keep on their Monday night games. So I don't bring any crochet or anything with me because I'm scorekeeping at that game. The Thursday games, excuse me. My son doesn't play on Thursdays. My husband plays on Thursdays, but he plays with some of my friends. So I sometimes go and watch his Thursday games so I can go and have a little visit with them. And um, sometimes I scorekeep, sometimes I don't. So sometimes I bring my crochet, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I bring the dog with me, which if I bring her, then I don't bring any crochet because she needs enough of my attention that I don't get any crochet in anyways. It just ends up sitting there. So I got distracted with baseball quite a bit. He also had a tournament weekend. Um, so that's one of the things that we were up to this month. Uh, when we went away in July for vacation, his my husband's truck was acting up a little bit on the way home and we had an agreement going back a while that if his truck acted up that we weren't going to get it fixed, that we were going to say goodbye and get a new truck. So I spent, it's me who spends the time investigating what we're going to get and um researching and making sure we get a good price and all that kind of stuff. So I spent some time doing that and he got a new truck at the beginning of August. So there was that. And then about halfway through August, um, 
Our dog, whose name is Sophie, who has appeared in a few videos here and there right now, she is laying in the, over there on the floor. But about halfway through August, um, she had a seizure in the middle of the night one night. I shouldn't say in the middle of the night. It was very early in the morning. It was about six o'clock in the morning. Um, it was a pretty long seizure. It lasted, uh, we figure, two to three minutes. We did not time it. Um, but as pet owners who've never had their pet had a seizure before, it was very, very scary for us. Um, and so we had a few days there that we were just really worried about her and taking care of her. She kept um, throwing up and things like this as well. So she's been to the vet. The vet doesn't seem overly concerned about the seizure. Um, He's basically on the opinion that as long as she doesn't have more seizures or they don't occur often, that he doesn't want to put her on anti-seizure meds. They did some tests on her, which those tests did not show anything significant or a reason why for the seizures. So he's kind of letting it go for now. Um, she does seem to be back to her normal self now. As I said, she threw up for the first few days afterwards. Um, she does throw up sometimes when she's upset. So, and she had thrown up before she had the seizure that day. So we don't know if it was related to that. I, um, cause she was upstairs in our room when the seizure happened. Um, and she, the next night when we went to bed, she got sick during the night again and stuff like that. We thought maybe she was just upset by the room that maybe she remembered. So I slept downstairs with her for a few nights, which meant I didn't sleep very well. Um, I don't think any of us slept very well for the first three or four days afterwards because, you know, when the seizure happens and you're, we weren't actually asleep when it happened. Um... My husband hadn't been feeling well during the night and he had just come back to bed when it happened. So, um, you know, he had come back to bed and I kind of said to him, you know, are you all right type thing. And we'd had a little discussion, the two of us, and then we're just settling to go back to sleep, but we hadn't fallen back to sleep again when it happened. So, um, the next few nights afterwards, I'm going to say probably the next week, Neither one of us slept very good because we just constantly feel like we're keeping an ear out for her um, to make sure that she's all right. But as I said, she's been okay since then. Um, she was kind of off for a few days afterwards, tired, not her normal self. But the last um, a little about a week, she's been pretty much herself again. The other thing is, is that we kind of wondered whether she was a little stressed out about her daughter. You know, is she worried about her because her daughter was away for the summer? Um, which this was her fourth summer going away. It's not like it's a new thing, but, you know, dogs don't understand time, I don't think. Um, and usually I take her to visit my daughter once in a while, and she hadn't seen her in a little over a month at that point. So I don't know if she was worried about her. I'm not sure. But now that my daughter's been home... And things have been more normal around the house. She seems like she's feeling better. She's getting her energy back. The other thing is that her allergies were bothering her really bad. Um, she has seasonal allergies. They usually start around mid-August every year. Um, but she's on allergy meds, which seem to be helping. Um, and she does seem more herself the last week. So we obviously are still very concerned about her and are keeping an eye out on her, but um, the concern is less. Um, but yeah. So that is the other thing that I've been up to. And just summer is a busy time. Like I tend to crochet more in the win in the fall and the winter just because less stuff is going on. I had a really few really busy days and weeks with work. I actually had to work. I never work on weekends. I shouldn't say never. I rarely work on weekends. I worked the entire weekend last weekend, the Labor Day weekend. So I worked all three days. Um, I didn't work all day Monday, but I did work a few hours on Monday. We ended up that our week that we were off in August, one of my clients had an emergency and I had to come back home for that. 
that I lost a day and a half of my vacation to deal with that issue. Um, but yeah, so it's been a really busy August, both with personal and with our dog and with work and just everything. So it sounds really silly. I love summer. I love for it to be here. I wish that you know, we could have summer weather all year round, but at the same time, I do appreciate the, um, I guess monotony of winter and the fall and, you know, once it seems really silly. My daughter is still in school. She goes to college. She's in college. Um, and our son who lives with us, he's 28. He hasn't been in school in many years. Um, but you know, I do appreciate the schedule of fall and winter, how every day's, you know, the Monday to Friday has a very set schedule. Um, although I love taking time off and getting some time off work and I appreciate the time to relax. At the same time, I do appreciate just the set schedule of every day when I am working. So it is what it is. So anyways, um, if you're still here, after all that rambling, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear about you in the comments box below. Or as I said, my email is in the description. You can always email me. And um, I will see you next time on Laurie Hooks. Bye, everyone.